Morning everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Young Kilstra and I'm a dairy farmer from Saskatchewan, Canada. On our family farm here, we milk about 300 cows. And in today's video, we're gonna start dealing with an issue on our farm that's kind of been pressing for the last week. I guess since the snow started to melt, we looked at our liquid manure lagoon here and it was a lot fuller than we initially expected. Throughout winter, the entire pit gets covered with snow and you can't really see it at all climbing and, and filling up. And then all of a sudden the snow melted and we hardly have any storage left. I use a little measuring app on my phone and screen recorder so you guys can see exactly how much room we have left in here. But uh, the reality is this pit is simply gonna overflow before the fields are completely dry. A lot of our fields right now are still snow covered and uh, they're, they're just not gonna be dry by the time this thing overflows. So this morning we are gonna grab our liquid manure tanker from our other farm. We're gonna have to hook it up to the Bueller Versatile. The Case MX-285 is once again an open heart surgery. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna go and grab that tank. Gonna first drive out there with the farm truck and make sure all the tires are around. It seems to be every time we go to that thing after you know five or six months, there's always a round tire on that tank. So hopefully we're lucky. I know we replaced one last fall and all the tires are still around. We'll see how we make out this morning. But uh, yeah, we gotta start dealing with this pit pretty soon here. Well, we got the versatile running. We definitely had some issues this morning getting that thing going. Uh, the fuel uh, was not getting to the engine right away, so we had to pump the fuel to it. And we also had some battery issues, so we had to put this thing on the charger yet as well. Uh, so rough start, but we got her going anyway. So this versatile has had some upgrades over the course of winter. Biggest thing are the lights. We're gonna go over those quickly here. So we got a light bar on the roof, it's facing forwards. And we also got two more on the roof that are facing sideways. Now this is because the versatile is a tractor that we always run in front of our pull type sprayer. And occasionally in the summertime, we end up spraying at night. So these side light bars on the cab are gonna flood the field with light specifically on the booms of the pull type sprayer. So our sprayers, they got a 135 foot boom on them. Sticks out pretty far out the side. If you're going in crop at night, you wanna be able to see those things. Make sure they're staying out of the crop. And uh, those light bars are just gonna light those things up nicely. But with that, we're gonna have to take the hammer strap or the clavis off of the hitch of this tractor so that we can hook it up to that liquid manure tank. So that's what we're gonna start out doing. to our other yard we have another farm yard here and it's got a decent sized shed on it so we park a bit of equipment in there over winter time and that's where this little manure tank happens to be we like to keep our manure equipment in this shed so that our shed at home doesn't smell like crap all winter so we're gonna see and uh, check out how this tank's looking well we are pretty lucky this is the first time I think I've ever come to this tank after winter and all eight tires are still round so we're winning today, that's, that's a pretty good start. That is awesome. Well, we got the liquid manure tank back to the home yard here. We got a few small things to do with it yet. Check the tire pressures. 
And another thing, that float that signals when the tank is full is broken once again. It seems to fall off every single year in the tank. It's just a plastic float, but it doesn't last too long, so we gotta maybe work with that. I usually just time the loads though and uh, see how long it takes to fill it and we'll go off of that. Works pretty good. So a couple few, few small things to do yet before we get this thing going, but pretty close. It's the next day and we're standing in a very clean calf room here. A couple days ago, we took all the calves out of here and then yesterday, my sister and Elaine, she went ahead and pressure washed and disinfected this entire room. So it is looking pretty nice and clean. I guess for the calf barn like this, you have a couple options for bedding. The first one, of course, would be straw. You could throw small squares in here. And the second option, which is the option that we use, is the sawdust. So you actually have a couple options on how to put the sawdust in the beds as well. And we opted for the square bales here of sawdust with the plastic around them just to try and get the least amount of dust going in one of these rooms. You have another option, of course, you can buy a sawdust thrower for your skid steer. That's a big bucket in front of the skid steer. You'd be able to back in here and just throw it over these front gates here and right into the pens, back up and probably do an entire line pretty quickly. You might have to grab a couple buckets, but it would be pretty easy. Uh, the reason why we stayed away from that personally if you guys look at this room, that's probably close to two years old now and it almost looks brand new. We do pressure wash it every time, but the reason why the ceiling isn't dirty and all those inlets and the vents and the tops of the doors and all the lights is because we don't make a lot of dust in here. And that is because we use the bales of sawdust instead of these sawdust throwers. So that's just one choice that we made uh, how we were gonna bed this room. But uh, this morning, me and dad are putting some more sawdust in here because it was clean. And the next thing we gotta do is put those square bales of sawdust in here. So that's what he's doing with the skid steer right now. Those pallets are super tippy. So we got four rooms in this calf barn and now every single room has enough sawdust probably for the next uh, couple weeks here. So that's awesome. See what else we got up to today. Next thing we're gonna do here is give the cows a vaccine. Uh, this is going to prevent disease in our herd, especially against uh, respiratory diseases for the cows, as well as mastitis in the udder. So these are two vaccines we use to prevent disease spread in our herd. And we find it works pretty good for us. We give it to fresher cows before they get pregnant. And this morning we got a long list of cows to do, so we're gonna get right at it. So the mornings that we do actually need to do some work on the milk herd here in the cow barn, our feeder goes through and he drops the feed in front of the cows and then locks these self lockers. So those are right here. And that locks all the cows up because they go and grab something to eat and then they get locked in these self lockers. needling all the cows there. We do use a new needle for every single cow. This adds up really quickly, but it also helps prevent the spread of any disease in the cows. And uh, another thing, if we're doing more than 30 cows, usually I'll type out all the numbers on an Excel spreadsheet and then order them from highest to lowest. This makes it a lot easier to go through your list of cows and to not miss one when you're walking past all the cows uh, like we were just doing there. So that's another thing done for today. This morning we're gonna be hooking the manure pump up to the Magnum that's in front of the feed wagon tractor right now. So we're gonna seal that tractor from feeding this morning and put our 2394 in front of that feed wagon and uh, swap them around. Then we're gonna find that liquid manure pump and drop it in the pit. Things getting fuller and fuller every day, so. Well, we definitely gotta do a lot more equipment shuffling than I had first hoped to get that pump out of the shed. Got the case wheel out of the budding manure spreader the combine as well, plus a combine header. So quite a bit of stuff to move out of the way, but I got a pump tomorrow, so not really much I can do about it. Well, that's our pump. Bren's putting the combine back in the shed there. 
Always looks funny when you see those things driving over top of snow. Anyway, we're gonna go put some fuel in this tractor, grease that pump, and then head over to the lagoon. Well, we got the pump backed up to the lagoon here. There is a pretty uh, big ice layer on top of this lagoon, but I was just able to kick through it right here. So, um, just on the edge, definitely don't wanna fall underneath that ice there. But we are gonna try and drop this pump through that ice there. Hopefully it's not too thick on that spot right there. We'll see how it goes. You see, we got the pit in there through the ice. There was a solid little bit of ice there. I had to push the spout through it there, but uh, we got her through. Unfortunately, the end of this pipe that goes to our fill spout there, uh, we left it in the pit a little bit overhanging. And a little bit of frozen ice on the inside there. I hit it a little bit with a two by four, but we got a rubber seal in here and it's very important we don't damage that. So I think my best bet for thawing that out is gonna be going to the barn, just grabbing a really hot bucket of water and coming back here, dropping that thing in there. Can't be easier than that. Well, Phil Sprout is lined up. Pipes on the pump, pumps through the ice. We're ready to do some really early spring manure hauling. Got to check that tank out a little bit, check the tires and do that kind of thing. But for the rest, we're pretty much ready to go. So in the next video, we're going to start pumping that liquid manure. This is as early as we've ever done it. It is unfortunate, but it's just the way that it is. That pit's full, so we got to get it out of there. Anyway, if you're looking forward to that, hit the subscribe button so you can watch the next video. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.